All right, here we are to our beautiful, beautiful soundboard project. Um, and we also have some background music now. And we actually have a little counter here in the top that will show us how far along we are with um, with our project. And I'm going to try to keep these under under one hour. But anyway, to uh, to remember where we left off, we're making a soundboard. The soundboard works quite easy. If I press a button, a sound will uh, a, a sound will play, and I can queue up the sounds, etc. One thing that I have, um, or one thing that, that we've established right now is that we, uh, we wanted to go with the um, convention over configuration approach. So in my binary, in my electron binary, I would basically bake some sounds and you could play them. Um, it's like the file name underscore with a integer and whatever integer would be after the underscore would be the shortcut control alt one control alt two control alt three etc then with control alt zero we can basically stop all the music from playing because sometimes when you have a long song like this one you want them to stop so i started thinking i was like gee this isn't uh this isn't exactly what i'm looking for i mean i kind of want to be able to give this to anyone for five dollars <laughs> and then you can put in your own files right because just because i love the air horn effect doesn't mean that you will love the air horn effect so we need to come up with some uh with uh with uh with somewhat of design to make this look good and so i figured you know let's spend a second thinking about what this would look like so we know that we already have some constraints um, because, you know, we can't have more than, oh, this is a, this is the designer by Gravit, by the way, which is pretty neat. Um, but we know that we can't have more than nine buttons. So that would give us a nice, uh, a nice grid of, uh, three by three. So this is kind of the look I'm going for, or that I want to go for. Basically, a bunch of buttons here. Then you could assign a sound to every every button there is. So first, let's make sure our application is capable of actually showing this. Let's get started by um, creating a row. And in the row, we have cells. And we have three of those. So let's uh, copy paste this two times, which will give us all we need to know. three rows with three cells each. That makes nine buttons. Last time I checked. Oh man, I forgot how to enable. Electron, enable developer tools. Yeah, 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 come on, I need shortcuts. F12, yeah, that's the one I want. Boom. Oh. Is so that easy? Window toggle dev tools. That'd be dope. All right, let's see what this does. It actually works. I mean, I sound surprised, but I totally knew this would actually work. All right, so here we have our three rows. So let's add a new class give it a horrible background color then a height of 30 percent 
a width of 100%. Ooh, fancy. Let's give you a height of 100% and also a width of 100%. Perfect, so there we got our three rows right now. We're going to use this space sometime later, I think. Then in our cell, um, height is so always going to be 100%, the width will be 33.3%. Horrible number because it will never fit. And let's do the background color blue. That's pretty neat. Doesn't look entirely square to me, but there's probably a very good reason for that. All right. Let's uh, get the show under. Oh, yeah, I know why. Because I'm smart. Yeah. That makes sense. That's okay. I'm okay with this. 100%. This is our cell class. But the reason why it's of course not a rectangle is because my screen is not rectangular. I completely knew that. I just wanted you to find out on yourself. And I hope you did. All right, anyway, um, getting distracted over here. Let's fire up our application again. Oh, this is interesting. Nothing is showing. Oh, right. Because we also need to set the um, height and the width of our application to 100% or of our body. Otherwise, it's not going to uh, otherwise it's not going to show. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. So the reason why they're all cascaded or why they're all um, linearly, linearly is because I need to set the uh, display to inline block. And then it won't fit because there's also padding involved. Basically after every one of these there's like a little space inserted. Technically to get it to show You'd have to program it or write it. Programming. You don't program HTML, right? You write HTML. You'd have to do it like this. Um, and then, of course, display this to inline block. However, ta da! So now all of our. Um, However, this is a bit of a shitty solution, like there's better ways out there. So, we're going to flex box it up. Because that way I don't have to care about the, um, wait, actually, hold on, I think I think I can do this by myself. Um, we simply pick display flex here. I don't think this is going to be enough, but yes, I want to terminate the batch job. Terminate the batch job. Boom. That's what I'm doing. Oh boy. Didn't quite work as expected. Or did it? No, it did not. Did I also put your display flex? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, container, it's items, container flex. The default flex items are laid out in source order. That's hot. Flex grow. Flex direction, flex grow. Default is zero. Basically, I need to be able to 
Wait, what if you don't get anything at all? So I need to know whether my children need to be a special... Oh, look at that. Next item, background tomato. That's interesting. It's probably red then. Oh, Ooh, that actually does kind of look like a tomato. Actually, I think I know what's going on here. I say I say that often. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I don't want a perfect center. I just need this to, uh, ooh, boom. That's what I'm talking about. Flex flow row wrap. Flex flow row. Hmm. Oh. Nice. Row. Rep. Oh, well, that doesn't do what I thought it would do, but. 100% width. So now it's at flex. Ooh. Boom. There we go. I told you I know what I'm doing. 100% professional over here, in case you ever doubted me. It's probably for the best. Um, all right. So now that we had our buttons ready here, yeah, I forgot. I really, I still need to, I probably until the soundboard is done, I will forever wonder how to turn on. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right, of course, the background colors are a bit hideous. So... I'm going to give these bad boys some padding of, let's say, 16 pixels. And I'm going to give all of them a button with a pointer or cursor. So you'll see I'm copy pasting a lot and you're like, well, gee, that's not very efficient and you're absolutely right, but it'll make all sense in a bit. Because what I'm most worried about right now, nice, is to at least get it working. And then I will worry. Dude, that's great. I will worry about everything else later. Basically. So I think I put flex one on here. I'm not sure if it matters. Oh, that definitely matters. What does a flex property do? Let's learn something. The flex property. Let all the flexible items be the same length regardless of its content. Oh, so it's like a little boolean. Huh. That's dope. Today we learned something new. Or did we? No. We oh, wow, this actually looks pretty good as well. Nice. Anyway, we learned something new, so that's great. Um, so I'm going to give you data song. That's great. 
gonna give it a little attribute. And here I will create a, so, okay, so let me just explain what I wanna do. I wanna put an unclick handler in here. Then the unclick handler is going to open the file dialog and I will it will allow me to select a file. So, you know, as always, the goal is to make sure that something works, not that it's perfect. So the first step would be what I just described, getting a button in there that takes a that takes an unclick handler or that uh, a button that has an unclick handler which will open a file dialog. I have no idea how to do that. But I will find out in just a bit. Is this how it's done? Let's forget these things, man. Actually, I think I can just... Oh, no, I can't do it. I think this is to get an attribute. But this sh should be enough. Don't know if it is. It is. Look at that. All right. So now we should read up a little bit on the uh, on the API for Electron. Oof. All right. Process runs in main. Entry point, interesting. Aha, uh -huh, that's very interesting. So, right, so Electron basically has a rendering process and it has a main thread as well, or a main process. I'm actually not sure if, if Electron works in processes, but it's a nice analog, it's a nice, um, it's a nice way to describe things. It's a nice, uh, what's it called? It's not an analog. I forgot the words. It's late and I forget words when it's late. Analogy. That's the one I was looking for. See, I found it. It's a nice analogy. So basically what you see in here and what happens in the background is completely different. So there's two ways that we can do this. One is we basically send an event from the we send an event from the rendering thread to the main thread to open up a dialog which sounds like it's a proper way but they also say if you want to use a dialog object from a renderer process remember to access it using the remote however i don't know what the effects of this are is it just going to completely freeze the rendering thread that would suck i don't want that so we need to find so we need to talk to the main thread which is okay because we've done that before or we're doing it even so we got the icp here oh shoot i should move this over then just for my sake we'll split this up into uh, into different um into different files at one point hmm so icp emit Open dialog. Let's see. What does it take? Ooh, fil ooh, filters. Hello, filters. That's great. Show save dialog. Show message box. Blah, blah, blah. Show error box. Show certificate trust dialog. That's a nice one. But we won't need this. All right, so we basically need to um, find a way to get a message into our main thread, which I assume. Do we emit here? We send. Hmm. All right, ICP in renderer. ICP renderer. Emit. The ICP renderer is an instance of the event emitter class. Well, if it's an event emitter class, that means we can emit. But they don't call it emit, they call it sending. <sighs> of course. 
All right, so we're going to send open dialogue. Then in here, window.webcontents. I guess win.webcontents on open dialogue. Log. Yeah, buoy. Boys, boys, fine too. And window ID, man, I don't care about any of this. And send sync. Oh, dude, that would be bad. Why would you do this synchronously? That makes no sense, man. It just makes no sense. People should just give up. Um. So that's the guy who still can't hot update his uh, Electron app. Okay, so. Oh yeah, we need the click handler. Button, at event listener, click a doodle do. Send the event. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's see what this does. I don't think it's doing anything. The best way to find out is to simply add some console log. Oh, it's uh, sending something. So we here we have our ICP and we send something open dialog. But it seems that it's not registering. Send to sends a message to a window. Send to host like as we send, but the event will be sent to WebView element in the host page instead of the main process. Well, gee, I have some bad news for you. You're not sending anything anywhere. Or are you? Did I get this right? Am I perhaps sending the nope, I'm not. I'm sending the right channel. Wait, channel? String sends a message to the main process I think via channel. You can also send arbitrary arguments. Arguments will be serious in JSON string and has no function project will be included. The main process handles it by listening for channel with IPC main module. Ooh. Hello, oh boy. Explains. We never got one of these bad boys. It's weird that we use web contents here to send. That must be me doing something wrong, but I will refuse to admit this. Boom, that's what I'm talking about. I'm doing the right thing for once. So I'm gonna change this so that, we, uh, so that we're not bothered as soon as we open up. Okay, so that's that. So I'm just skipping through a lot of important parts here. So this comes from dialogue. Oh, look at that. ICP main and dialogue. I like dialogue. Dialogue is nice. Look at ICP main here. Oh, what? IPC interprocess communication, not intercommunication process. And then we got dialog. What does the signature look like? Dialog show open dialog properties. Show dialog properties, open file, open directory, multi multi selections. Damn, what are all these props, man? Never heard of these props. Desktop development is hard, people. I don't want multi selections, I only need one. Open directory sounds like something we need. Um, let's see. Show open dialog. Options. I like that it's optional. That makes no sense. And a callback. 
Ooh, look at that. That's awesome. That's definitely something we need. Options. Filters. Filters. Yes, we should allow a user to only select music. File filter optional. It's perfect. Perfect. Just perfect. I'm just going to... Uh, Oh wait, never mind. There it is, filters. Goes in here. Images, movies, nope. Name. Dope clips. Dope tunes? What do you call it these days? Tunes? That sounds very old. So I'm gonna play some MP3s. That's all we support for now. Dope. AF tracks then we have a actually i don't know the arguments so let's just turn it into a, a good old regular function for now so that we can log the arguments and see whether this actually works or not because in the end that's going to be very important Nice. Look at that. Huh. It actually works. I need a bigger drive as well. This is the music you hear right now. Um, sweet. All right, let me head into my uh, code folder. Soundboard. Wait, why am I selecting a folder? I don't want to select a folder. Oh, open file, open directory. What about open file? It's weird. That makes no sense. But this is desktop programming in Electron, so... What actually? Oh, there we go. That's better. Sweet. All right, not sure what's going on there, but at least I know the first thing that's returned is a file. Which is awesome. Terminate the batch job, yes, please. Oh man, I just discovered we're going to be running into a problem. All right, so there's the argument. So the problem here is that I need to find a way to actually read the metadata of the mp3 file. Because I don't just want to show out, I guess I could just show this. But that sounds bad at the same time. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to remove this. Yeah, am I? I'm not going to remove this just yet. This stays, you stay. So we open the dialog, then we have a callback. And the callback should send something to the window. And the event is called, oop, we're gonna send at file. So we need to use some of the options here as well. File, sound file, sound file, hmm, what? Sound file. Ooh, yeah. We're not going to send a pretty name. Okay, so we need to add some more code right now because so we need to know which button has been clicked, right? Um. So. Oop. Data button is number of zero and we are going to send an options ID with the button ID which is button data set dot what did I call it button Ooh, that's weird but that's okay So now in here, 
we can unwrap this and just always send the uh, send the button ID. And now what we can do is we can send back the button ID so we know what to map it to. That's awesome. It's coming along real nice. And we're only 30 minutes in. Isn't that a th treat? All right, hold on, because nothing actually changed here. So we have a stop, we have a play, which is great. There's a progress bar, all the work we've done and it's going to be deleted. No, but that's okay. It's gonna be worth it. So we're going to play that um we select our dope if tracks then we send it and then as soon as it's sent we need to actually store it so we call that foul which is a weird name but i'm gonna go with it anyway so acp on instant clown posse that's where i knew it from and i believe it's sound foul and button id in our function. Basic buttons button. This document query selector. The data button. Wait. What is this called? Data. Damn it, I keep forgetting. Data button. Oh, that's just it. Data button is button ID button ID button data set song sound file let's see this should be enough I think did it remember my last opened it did that's pretty cool Cannot repurpose it's probably data set of null. What? That's interesting. But also expected. Did it work at all? Data button equals zero. Let's just uh, try whether it works or not. I think this is my favorite song of uh, Mr. Joachim. Hmm, that's weird. That should have worked. Unless I'm not sending all the data. Sound file and then also the button ID. Fire back up our application, see whether it worked or not. Look at that undefined, undefined. Then what the hell are you doing, dude? Wait, maybe I'm just... Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Oh, it's event. It's weird. Won't be using that. Do I use it here? I don't. Let's underscore it. Because you are un insignificant my friend you are so insignificant i have minimized you to an underscore Ooh, that's more like it sorry we're oh right mother f mother fuck i can say fuck it's my stream and this must be also similarly Event followed by the arguments. The sound file is an array. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. Because I'm not used to unwrapping in. Uh... Huh, it does work like that. Sweet. 
Oh, cannot read property symbol of unfound. Okay, I know why this happened. That's okay. So now we've actually set the song, so that's great. Huh. Okay, that's pretty dope. But you notice that I've made actually a mistake because we need to be able to... Because, um, of course, what happens if we click on the button, we want to play a song. But if we're clicking on the button and we're selecting something, we can't play the song, Brian. And you'd be right. So I'm just going to do a little add button here. That song, bro. I should stop doing that. That song, bro. Man, it's getting so much mileage out of the soundboard already. Um, classes add button. So the lazy thing to do here, and I've been doing a lot of lazy things tonight. Oh man. So okay, don't don't hold this against me going to do it somewhat properly. Uh, add button is document. No, wait. No, 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 no. Button. Query selector. Data action equals. Eh, oh man, I forgot it again. Add. So now when we click the add button, we do the right thing and this is fine i can move you up here with the rest of the listeners okay so that's going to be causing but that's okay we have to just prevent it from bubbling um so that's cool and then we have to add another button the event listener, click. Play me like a fiddle. <sighs> what does a fiddle look like anyway? Isn't it like just a flute? Fiddle. Whoa, it's not a flute. Wow, boy. I have to cancel the stream now. A fiddle is a violin. Weird. Keep on rocking, girl. Sweet. I didn't know that. I thought a fiddle was like a recorder. It's like fiddling around, like you're playing like a recorder, like an Irish leprechaun. But I was wrong. Which is okay. It's okay to be wrong. Alright, so... Tonight we have learned what a fiddle is, or at least I have. Did you just call me a... Cause why didn't they call it a violin? Wait, what's the difference between a fiddle and a violin? What's the difference between a fiddle and a violin? The difference is in the specifics. A violin is a fiddle, but a fiddle is not necessarily a violin. Oh, I don't give a shit anymore. Congratulations, Google, you cured me. Um, okay, so now what we have to do is... Wait, which song is playing now? Say goodnight. Well, I don't want to hear you anymore. Bye bye. Boom. Different song. I like this song. So. Now the real question is, is this actually going to work? Yes or no? I'm going to say no. Um, because. Because I'm negative like that. But that's okay. It's okay to be negative now and then, my friends. Um, let's see. Sound of play. Sound of play. 
gotta play a sound when I get clicked. Oh yeah, when I get clicked, yeah. Sweet. All right, let's see. Is it going to play a music song, yes or no? Click that song button. Dude, it works? That's weird, I did not expect this. Hmm. Hey Brian, or hey Vsauce, Brian here. If you click on a song, select it for your buttons, and you click the button, will the song play? As it turns out, it does. That's pretty cool. Great, I am a genius. Boom! Alright, so... That actually works, huh? Ain't that some shit. Okay, so this is basically my proof of concept. It works. Which is dope. Let's see, how much time do I have left? 19 minutes, give or take, in this episode. Okay, so... Okay, it's time to do some uh, programmatic stuff. So all these rows and these cells, I basically want to generate them automatically because going to, that's going to well, that's going to make my life a lot easier down the down the uh, down the down the line. So if I these buttons, and I'm going to render all my buttons in here. Then I need row, cell, sound button, add button. Okay, I can remember this. So I'm going to say button elm document quit Ooh, what was that that was a shortcut query selector id buttons const rows is going to be three cells is going to be three as well let's keep it dynamic i like dynamics so we're going to have three rows and three cells so Or zero, wait, let row zero, row is less than rows, increment row by one, or let's see is zero, C is less than cells. C plus equals one. Const row is document create element. If I give it a class name of row <laughs> of row. Good job, Brian. Are you sure you're a genius? Um and append it to the buttons elm. So here we're going to create a cell. And we're going to append the cell to the row. Then I'm just gonna remove all of these, all of these. And this should give us a kind of give us what we're looking for. The new child element contains the parent. Oh. Oh, right. Uh, I'm trying to append a row to the row. That's not going to work. Let's see. This should work. Genius. Look at all the cells. The row, cell. Sweet. All right, so look at all of our code. It's starting to grow, man. All right, let's see. So then we have the button. Create element. 
div button class name sound button cell append child button to append it so that takes care of this but we also need to give it an id that's okay let's uh Hmm, okay, hold on. Give me a second to think. So, I'm, I'm contemplating two things right now. First thing I'm contemplating is getting chicken McNuggets. The second thing I'm contemplating is what do I use for the ID? What I can do, let's just do that for now. Get the IDs in here. And we'll simply increment it here. At least it gives us something to query. Um, button. Just cast it to string just in case. I think it doesn't matter. Um, but you never know. Let's see what this gives us. Awesome. That's actually pretty cool. But I wonder why it's not tall. I wonder. I also don't like this song, so I'm just gonna kick it out. Golden horn. Like the horn I'm tooting about myself all the time. It can't be because there's no text in there, because that wasn't an issue here. See? Sound button. Cell and a sound button. Uh, wait, what? Okay, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. It's okay. There's no reason to... No reason to get upset, Brian. And I am about to get upset. So this is great. So here we have our button. Now our button has to do a few things. And because of the magic of JavaScript, um, and many other programming languages as well, it's pretty bad to write a function in a loop. So we're going to write our function outside of the loop and simply pass on the button. Uh, let's call it set up button for now. It takes a button. That's it. Actually, what will you take? You create the button. You are the button. So how about you're just going to return the cell? That's a bad name then, but whatever. Set the button. And then we append the button to the row. That reads a lot easier, if I may say so myself. Because now what we can also do, yeah boy, is const add song button is document create element div. Let's see. Is this still good? Song button. Oh, we just got the add button. Oh, that's okay. I can live with it. Add button. Then on the button, we put an event listener for clicking. And we say, play me like a fiddle. Then we play the song. We return to cell. Huh. Yes. I would like to terminate the patch job. What a weird name anyway. Oh, I need to add some text. 
add button text content add song this is going great so far or is it where's my text I'm never adding the add button am I I'm not The add button it's great oh man this is gonna turn into a react project i promise you this how far how are we on time 50 minutes 10 more minutes guys we can make it we made it wow damn that's really that's something else all right Eesh. all right well this is but this is great um, because it also means I can remove this lat. Well, actually, no, fuck it, I'll just remove it. I said fuck it again. I'm such a bad boy. So, we play like a fiddle, which is great. We got our buttons element here, which is also great. We have an event listener here, which is also, I'm not even, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. So all of that is set up correctly. I just need to remove this since that's all contained into the setup button. It's called setup button, but it doesn't set up. It creates a button. Well, let's call it what it is. Cause it's a bit weird if you have like setup button and it returns a button you, that's like, you don't expect a function that sets something up to return something. That's just weird. I don't like weird things. Code has to be predictable more than anything. Um, at least in my humble opinion. All right, enough about my philosophy. We are running out of time. So, um, all right, F first, thing I have to fix is my buttons are now no longer hmm they're no longer doing what they're so oh wait a second this is because of you're not flexing nope no that was worth a try anyway ah ah oh I know why it's because our buttons isn't high enough. Because our height of our buttons needs to be 100% height of height, height of buttons. Width is okay. So now, bada boom, bada bing. That looks really fucking weird. That's great. I had song here. It's gonna play the air horn. Now here, it's gonna play moon And this will be. We'll be right back, song. Dude, this is great. We've made a lot of progress tonight already. Um, just a few more things I wish to do. For starters is that we need to be able to show what song is actually behind um, what song is actually behind the uh, behind the button so it's going to set the text content I need to set the uh, boy fuck what's it is it like this const file name is sound file splice wait it's, damn my javascript foo is a bit fucked up let's say we have this string foo bar foo bar Just split it. 
sweet. I just split it by this thing. Oh boy. So this is only going to work. Windows only. Make this not just windows only. So now we got the file name in here. Oh, actually that's not, that's the, let's call these the path parts, path parts. Uh, file name is the path par is the, um, the length path parts length minus one because the arrays begin by or start at zero. Let's see. That's actually really cool. Oh, did I just change the... Wait, what? Oh, right, right, right. I changed the text content of the button. That makes sense. This is actually very fitting. Um, a very fitting uh, song for uh, the mistake I just made. But overall, I'm not too, I'm not too upset about our progress tonight. Everything's working. We got to the point where we want to go. And that, that space I was talking about earlier in the episode, like here. I think that's fine for now. How much time do we have left? Um, we are at 57 minutes. Okay, I really like this background color, even though it's probably like the default color, but it's pretty anyway. Ebebeb, love Ebebeb. Ebebeb is now my favorite color. All right, so we have to get rid of our pink background color for this to look good, I think. Sorry, pink background color, but something just has to go. By border, you are turning into a pretty application. Eesh. Okay, so this border is, or the, uh, the 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 padding is definitely annoying the living shit out of me. Probably should turn like to eight or something. Hmm. Not too bad. See what it looks like this. Oh. Yeah, sure, let's go with eight. Eight's a good number. It's a lucky number in some cultures. That's a lie. I don't know if it's a lucky number in some cultures. It might be. Eight pixels. Eight pixels probably makes sense anyway. It's what I was going for. Look at that. That's beautiful. That's great. Downside is that my um, shortcuts no longer work. But we can... Uh, we'll, we'll find a way around this. In fact, I think that we can do that during next episode. Because the code has turned into... Um, into a not-so-pretty mess. But that's okay, because that's kind of what programming is. It's like, um, I was going to say it's like Bob Ross, but it really isn't. It's frustrating at times, but you can always undo things. Whereas with painting, if you fuck up, got to get the, uh, got to get a new canvas. With programming, programming, there is no need. According to our timer, we are at the uh, one hour mark, which is perfect. So we got this done. We're able to select songs and we're able to play them by clicking on them, which is, uh, I could not ask for more. So with that, I will stop the stream and please check out the credits for 
the music in the description of this video and I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed it and um, soon I will uh, we'll do another episode where we clean up the code and make it all a bit more functional because right now it works but it looks like shit there's a lot of things the code is shit and there's a lot of a uh, lot of things I want to change so yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good evening or a good morning or a good afternoon wherever you're from. And I hope you'll have a wonderful day.